we are launching a complete kit to VESC your GT without any soldering, without any programming. It's basically just put everything together and go for a ride. Now I'm gonna show you how it's done right here. What do you need to do is get this kit. The first thing is the connectors. Uh, one of them is a super flux connector and the other is the foot pad connector. Okay, the next thing is the toolbox. We made this really nice toolbox because I hate losing tools. So we made a nice little toolbox where you get all the tools you need to vest your GT. Next, of course, is the powerhouse Thor 300 mounted on a GT drop-in plate. I think is the prettiest thing in the build is the GT FO adapter and bolt kit. We made these beautiful adapters. These are designed by Auden. We made a very expensive mold for the GT titanium bolts. These bolts are lighter than stock, as you will see, and they're longer and much more durable. And nothing really needs to be said about the smart BMS. It's just a BMS. It's smart. You plug it in and it does its job. The LED kit, you can see it comes complete with heat sinks uh, on the front LED. Then there's a status LED and a back LED. And of course, there's a little kit with a thermal paste that you can use to install your LEDs. And we'll see in a while how you do that. I'm going to open my toolbox. And the first thing I'm going to do is just remove the bumpers, the fenders, and the foot pads. And it should be really easy. There's like a million videos on these. And of course, the tools are all provided. So you take that little wrench, the L wrench there, and you take one of the bits, which is the T25 bit, and unbolt the fenders first. Then uh, you turn it around and unbolt the bumpers, and then your foot pads should just fall off. Now you see in the front of the box, you've got the battery connector on one side and you've got the motor and foot pad connector on the other side. We need to unplug the motor and the foot pad connector. So let's do that. You just turn the connector knob and just pull the connector out as simple as that. Next, using the same bit, we are gonna remove the axle carrier holders. We're gonna remove those bolts and take those retainers off. All right, next step, we take the big T45 Torx uh, wrench from our toolbox and we open the big motor bolts. And that should be really easy. Once you open the bolts on both sides, the motor should just slide out from the bottom since we have taken the retainers out. Now I'm gonna simply remove these four bolts on the front box and the four bolts on the battery box so I can remove the rails and then we can start working inside each box. All right, first we'll open the front box. Future Merchant uses a T20 security bit for this part, not the normal T25 that they use on the bumpers and the fenders on the outside. So we have that special bit also included so you can change the bit uh, and with the security bit, let's open the front controller box. Once we're in the controller box, we're gonna start unplugging things. And the first thing to do is gonna be to unplug the main battery cable. And now you've disarmed the controller, so it's much safer to handle. Next, we're gonna disconnect the uh, communication cable and the GT switch. Now make sure you pinch and pull it up. You don't just pull it up because it's gonna break off. So pinch the little tab and then pull it up for all the connectors. And then we're gonna use a Phillips bit to take out uh, all the little bolts that are holding the controller down. Uh, once you take all the bolts, make sure you store them somewhere. We can reuse them if you really want to. Um, they're good bolts with Loctite. So uh, we're going to remove all the bolts. And then once all the bolts are off, we're going to use our big hex wrench attachments to remove the motor connector plastic retainer and the foot pad connector plastic retainer. Okay, once the controller is out of the box, the box should be pretty much empty. I did not show how to remove the LED, but the LED can be removed easily with removing this one little bolt using the T10 Torx attachment. Next step is a bit tricky for some people, but this is necessary if you want to use the super flux. You take the metal file that we have provided and holding the box this way, you have to file off the big motor connector hole so that it is round. The original motor connector hole looks something like this, and using the file, just file away the soft aluminum until it is round-ish. 
It doesn't have to be completely, absolutely round. You can already see some metal coming off, even though this hole is perfectly round. The metal is very easy to file. It'll, sh it'll take you just filing for about two to five minutes to get it round-ish. Once done, I like to clean the box with some alcohol wipes, or you can even get something like um, a cloth to wipe off all the little metal shavings that might have gotten in there when you were filing things. But getting all the metal shavings out of the box is really necessary. You can even vacuum it or clean it with a brush. Whatever you like, just make sure the box is squeaky clean before we start installing the Thor, which means it's time to install the Thor. You just need to literally just drop it in there and it sits on the posts and then use the three bolts provided to just tighten it. Next, let's install the LED kit and it comes with the front, rear and status LED. The wires on the status LED should already be pre-wired. Install the status PCB first and uh, here you can either use the screws that we provided or the ones that you just removed from your controller remember you can use two of those and mount the status pcb like so next thing install the front led and then taking the thermal paste kit i'm going to wipe down the front and also wipe down the heat sinks just to make sure the surface is nice and smooth now i'm going to take my thermal paste and just apply a dab on these two sides and at the bottom and you're basically done now i'm just going to use the same led retainer and the same bolt to bolt down our led and that's that first we're going to take the two pin connector from the status led you can see here it's called the switch connector and it's going to go all the way here to this four pin connector on this edge next we're going to take the three pin connector which says status led and then it's going to go all the way here to this four pin connector, which is right next to the buzzer. And finally, the front LED should already be connected. But if it's not or you took it off, you can connect the front LED where the status PCB says front LED. Next, uh, you see these two connectors coming from the GT wire harness. There's a big eight pin one and a small one coming from the switch. And I'll just plug them in like that. Use the silicone provided with the kit to just run it over the edge of the connector where there is a gap because of the filing that we did. And once you have covered the whole gap, you can just tighten the nut of the Superflux connector on top. Uh, hand tight is fine. If you do have a wrench, it'll be good to tighten it down with a wrench. But if you tighten it down with your hand really nicely, it should not come off. Make sure the notch here is pointing upwards so it's easier to connect it to the Superflux later. After that, we are going to get the foot pad connector that we have in the kit. And we're going to install it the same way as the Superflux connector. Just push it in from the inside and then with a nut, tighten it. Also, using silicone to waterproof it will be a good idea. With the connectors done, we are almost there. Now we need to connect these three big phase wires and it's simple to connect them we have color coded them now in the gt kits so you can connect the green to green blue to blue and yellow to yellow that's as simple as that there's also a long six pin jst connector on the motor connector which you can connect right here next to the usb ports this is the hall sensor connector now the foot pad is not connected yet so don't forget to plug that in on this three pin connector on the edge of the Thor. This is the only three pin connector on the Thor, so it cannot be confused. At this point, we're ready to connect the battery, but not quite yet. You can unscrew all the screws on the bottom of the box like so, turn the box around and open the lid. Once it's open, it should look like this and you just need your T10 Torx tool again to open these two screws and remove the BMS cover. We're going to do a bit of cheating here. I could not find the GT BMS for this video. So I'm going to use our BMS and pretend that this is a blue color GT BMS because everything is the same. First, remove the CAN connector and the three pin charge connector. Now I remove the, the big controller XT60 followed by the balance connector. Now, now the balance connector can be a bit tricky, but if you pinch the big tab on top and then wiggle it 
you should be able to get it out without a problem. Finally, I removed the big battery XC60 connector and that will free the GTBMS and you can remove it. Okay, time to install first our LED. So the LED just plugs into the LED DST connector coming from the GT and then you can just leave this CAN connector unconnected like that. We will not be needing that. Followed by putting the LED tab from the GT back on. Now it's time to put our BMS back on. So I slide in the BMS, connect the charge connector, put on the balance connector until it uh, clicks. Then I connect the big XT60 controller connector, followed by connecting the battery finally. And once you've got the battery connected, it is time to close everything off. But first, we have to make sure none of the wires are in the way of the screw because that could lead to a dangerous situation. So make sure your cables are routed on both sides from the gaps. And then you put the cover on, tighten the two bolts with a T10 bit attachment. We put the gasket back on, we put the lid back on, and we tighten the bolts in the reverse order of how we opened the box. Now we move on to the front box again, and finally it's time to connect and power on our VESC. So we connect the big XT60 connector, and there's gonna be a bit of a spark and a pop, but that's okay. And then once it's connected, we can turn on our VESC. And once you turn it on, you should be able to see the status LED, and all the other LEDs should be pre-configured, so you should see the front LED, the back LED, and the status LED showing the battery percentage. GT gasket, make sure it sits in the gap perfectly and doesn't pinch. And just put all the bolts on the lid back on. Then we bring in one rail and we change the bit from a security bit to the T25 normal bit. And we attach the battery box, top two screws, and the controller box, top two screws. And then what I like to do is get these adapters and bolts out, get one adapter block and put it on the battery side, put the cable inside the block, put the superflux on a slightly raised surface, and then uh, bring the rail on top to align the holes of the superflux and the um, rails and the adapters, and put those rails through and try to tighten them and get them to hold. Once they're holding, we move on to the other side and do the same for the other adapter block and rails. And once it's done on both sides, um, we can put on the retainer little plates. Now we install the rear foot pad, the fenders, the front foot pad with the connector in the reverse order, just like we removed it. Then we put the front bumper and the rear bumper on really easy. And then we turn the board around and we should be able to power it on and you should be able to see the lights on and the foot pads should respond to you pressing them and the board should balance and move front and back if everything is good the vehicle is moving in the correct direction you should be able to put the charger on and as soon as you put the charger on the light should turn from green to red once you confirm that the vehicle is working properly let us just quickly show you how you can access the uh, Charge BMS app. Take out your phone and download our BMS app. Enable your Bluetooth and location, and you can just first go to language if your language is not in English, and make sure your language is changed to English. Next, we click the uh, Bluetooth button on the top right, and then give uh, it a minute to scan uh, the Bluetooth in the BMS in the battery box. Once it returns the name of your BMS, you can click it and you can see your uh, battery charging. And if you scroll down, you will be able to see all the 18 cells, individual cell voltages. That's all, that's it. I would like to thank everybody in the community that helped bringing these awesome products to the market. And thank you very much. Keep engineering and I will see you next time.